What's up guys? I got another whiskey barrel guitar done. This one is the Few Spirits Caster or whatever you want to call it. Paul, the master distiller, reached out to me on Instagram. So there's some value to Instagram. And he said, hey, I've got a bunch of barrels I'm sitting on. You want to come up and pick them out and make a guitar? And I said, of course. So this guitar is actually made out of few barrels. Fuse based in Evanston, and I'm supposed to do the victory shot with a glass of the drink, but I finished it because I actually really enjoyed this stuff. So, uh, gonna have to just tell you how good it is. <laughs> this one was a little bit of a pain. Uh, Paul had these smaller barrels that I picked up, and the staves were bent at a little bit of a steeper angle. I got them straightened eventually, but this is like a mild arch top. You can see it right there where the barrels sort of curve down. So you got a little bit more access. The whole top sort of has this arch to it. Same thing with the back. And what happened is I made the guitar body. I threw this on the CNC to route out their logo and the guitar body moved and the bit was just hogging out way too much material. So I had to re-sand off the top, make another top, and then reroute it, but this time I routed it before. I put it on the body and then re-glued it on. So a little bit more work on this one this time. Still trying to figure out that CNC, the settings on it. This one ended up taking just a little bit more than what I wanted in depth, but with the black paint of the logo here, it actually looks up pretty good. The filming of the CNC went not all that great. <laughs> So let's get into filming and show you how this is done. So we got to take apart these barrels and we've got an angle grinder and a cutoff and we're just going to cut off each of the rings. These are galvanized steel. These are the smaller barrels as you can see. Got 12 of them. So we're just going to pop each ring off. We got to flip over this last one. And these barrels were actually still pretty fresh, so they did have a decent amount of smell. And you can see the smaller tops. Wanted to use those tops, but they were just too small. So we're going to double check the size of each slat. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to cut off the slats, get them sized up, and get them all prepped. And hopefully, hopefully, they sort of go back to their original shape. So we'll go ahead and do a whole bunch of prep work on the two barrels that I took apart. And then I've got my bin of cutoffs here that we'll use to grill with. I try to reuse all my scraps. Then here's the tricky piece is all the barrels have a taper on them to fit together and I've, I've got to cut that off. So I slowly go through now and cut that edge off so it's flat. So I'm releasing a lot of the tension in the wood here by trimming all of this up. See that taper on the barrel. And then once we cut off that side, I've got a flat side now. So both sides are flat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the char and this is gonna release a lot of the tension in the wood itself. This gets a little bit messy, for sure. So I put a new blade on my saw. And we'll go through and just do this slowly for all the pieces that I cut up. And boy, does that stuff smell like whiskey. We'll then take this over to the joiner then, and we'll put an edge on it. We'll run it through twice and make sure I've got a nice flat gluing surface. So this is my process for using these barrel staves. And you can see it straighten out a little bit just through all that little prep work I did. And then what I'll do is I'll take these down to the basement and I will stack some weights on them and let them sit for a while, which is what you see here. I let these sit for about eight weeks trying to get it a little bit flatter. 
So then we're going to go ahead and glue up. Just going to use some regular type on wood glue. Clamp this down. Get the barrel marks to line up. And we'll just screw this together. Try and pinch the edges so that I can get them sort of flat. You see I can clamp the edge here and make sure that I'm at least pulling it all tight. And you can see it's coming up off the bench so I'll stack some weights on make sure it sits flat. And then it's still got a decent curve here so I'm building a special jig to put this through my dual drum sander. We passed this through, I don't know, 20 times and just take a little bit off each time and that does the trick, gets the barrels flat enough to make the guitar body. So then we glue on a backer plate in the wine press clamp and then what I do is I come back and route out some of these lightning holes so I've got a significantly lighter body, cannot play a guitar out of all oak. Way too heavy. So then once we've done the routing, we're going to cut this out on the bandsaw. This is my Craftsman 10 inch saw. I've had this for years. And really it's just been a good little tool. And you can see as I'm moving this along the saw, there is a lot of play in the barrel. It is definitely not a flat piece. So it does require a bit of work. And then we're going to route off the sides, get it nice and flush. Oak tends to sort of tear out on the edges, so you can see I'm leaving that edge clean and I'll go back once I've got control of the piece. So we're going to go back and screw in the template. This was the original top. And we're going to use some locator pins to clamp this together without having to screw through the body. So that's the locator pins. We'll actually drill this out on the other side, make sure it's perfectly joining correctly. And we'll put a dowel in and then we'll just glue the two plates together once that dowel dries. And these locator pins really just help put the guitar back together. So it's all matched up. So there's the dowel. We'll cut those glues in, let them sit overnight, and then glue the plates together. And then we'll come back with some wood glue. Got the locator pin set up. Pop this together. Spread out the glue. I really do prefer Spreading that glue out with my finger, I feel like I just get much better feel of how much glue is on the piece. The templates are perfect for doing the locator pins. Pound them in, take it back to the wine press clamp, let it sit. And then again we'll go back to the bandsaw and cut off the waste. Speed this up a little bit more. Again, once we cut all that off, take this back upstairs to the router and route it clean and make sure that your camera's in focus. Once the body is cleaned up, sometimes I sand the edges, sometimes I don't. This one I didn't need to. Here we're going to take a quarter inch round over and round over the sides. You can see how uneven this top is now. But this at least gets a nice clean edge. And then I've got a new tool in the shop to do some sanding on the sides. I found this tool out of Canada and it just plugs in and it cleans up the sides really quickly. It's just a flap sander. So then this is one of my favorite things to do, which is sort of burn burst the edge. 
this ties sort of the char that's left on the wood and it ages up the sides. I used to do this vinegar tea mix and I think this looks so much better. It matches the vibe of the barrels since they're charred themselves. So I spend the time doing this on the front and the sides and really like the way this looks when it's all done. Once I feel I've got a good enough char, I'll take this back over to the flap sander and just take off anything that's sort of loose. And then I've got the nice charred sides and sort of cleaned up. This speeds up my process now incredibly. At this point then, I took it to the CNC and tried a couple different designs. I actually thought the bottom left looked cool, but it just was too big. So we ran with the smaller in the corner design. It took about an hour and a half. I did this twice. Don't have any footage of that. But what I did is I ended up having to redo the top. I put a new top on because the body had shifted. So I've got a Japanese carving tool here. And what I do after I run this through the router is I just scrape up any of the loose material. So any of the sort of burrs that are left from the CNC. I go through and I just clean this up. And of course, once I have it done, I'll go back and reburn the edge and sort of reroute the top. But I've got some vacuuming, some wire brushes. I just want to make sure that this is as clean as possible before I paint. And that chisel just sort of brings it all together. So then we're going to paint with just some black paint. And this takes probably about half hour, 45 minutes in total. Sort of just nice and relaxing. Go slow. Kind of enjoy doing this actually. I would prefer to have a laser burner to burn this in. But those are $6,000 and maybe one day I'll get there depending on how many more custom things I can do with these barrel tops. So we paint this in. We also do the spirits piece with a smaller paintbrush. And then any of the overlap, we can just scrape away once it's all dry. Then come back and sort of just finish up routing the rest of the body. You can see I rerouted the pickup cavities and then just needed to clean up the bottom cavity a little bit, get a little bit more depth. And I started doing this on all of my guitar bodies where I sort of back route around the pickup cavities. It lightens up the guitar body ever so slightly, but then it just gives me a little bit of flexibility across the guitar body to sort of move everything, move all the wires. I don't have anything sort of stray causing any issues. Like I've said in some of these other videos, I have the necks made already. I haven't filmed that process. I've got a couple neck building videos out there. But this really just lightens up the body and gives me a little bit more room with the wires and everything. Not sure I really need to do this, but it just helps overall. We'll then take my 7 8 bit from Lee Valley, Brad Point bit, and drill this out. Sometimes the oak is still wet as I go deeper in, so I have to pop it out and put a new bit in. This is a Fostner bit. And you can see how much play is in the body in terms of the curve. Got to put a little bit of a wedge in before I drill the neck holes. And then we'll line up the neck and put it all together. Did not film all the assembly of the electronics. We'll go back in a video here. This guitar actually sounds awesome. I'm going to deliver it to Paul coming up here shortly. And I've got a couple more orders for him as well. But we're going to actually film in the warehouse hopefully of him playing with my little uh, five watt Gibson amp. This thing sounds outstanding, the pickups and this combination, I don't know why, but this is one of the better sounding ones for sure. This is the neck. This is the bridge. 
bridge. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you in the next video.